today as we're closing out uh, chapter three and moving into chapter four here in first Peter, uh, I noticed Peter just keeps saying these same couple things over and over again. And uh, I don't know about you, but when I read the Bible, a lot of times I'll hear things so many times that my eyes kind of gloss over and I don't pay attention to them. So I thought it was worthy of taking a pause today and just looking at these couple words that I've identified that, uh, He's really trying to hit home here and see maybe how they speak to us this week. Uh, the first word I noticed is suffering. He just keeps talking about our suffering. Don't be afraid to suffer. Jesus suffering for us. And I thought it would be a good idea to look at suffering like Christ's suffering versus our suffering. I mean, if we look at Christ's suffering, um, it was a very physical suffering, wasn't it? He, he came to earth here and basically just got punished and, and, and brutally beaten before he went to the cross as payment for our sins and then was resurrected again. And, and we hear that so much in modern Christianity anymore. It's almost academic and we kind of lose uh, focus on what that really means. And that, you know, Christ died once and for all, for all of us. Christ's suffering was for everyone else. It wasn't for himself. Now let's flip over and look at our human suffering today. I mean, it, it certainly can be physical, but really in, in modern culture, it often isn't, certainly not in the United States, but it is very often a spiritual suffering. Uh, we feel suffering in in things, but we don't actually physically suffer. It's more of an internal suffering than an external suffering. We suffer with uh, disappointment and uh, inconvenience, maybe where real life doesn't match our actual physical desires. And, you know, our suffering exists in that tension between the physical and the spiritual. And in a lot of us, that manifests itself in feelings like anxiety, where we don't, we're, we're so concerned about what's going to happen that we often miss what's happening in the moment. And I think that contrast between Christ's suffering and our suffering relates to the other word I picked up on pretty well. And that word is, is water or flooding. Uh, it's an ongoing theme in the Bible. I think it's pretty awesome the way the Bible works that we're here uh, in the later sections of, of the biblical writings. And, and we're talking about water and Noah that goes all the way back to Genesis. So why is Peter doing this? I mean, take a minute and think about water. When you think of water, what comes to your mind? I think about things like powerful, fearful maybe, it's a necessity to live, but yet it can often take a life from you. And going back to Noah and the ark and the use of, of water, he's talking about Noah building his boat. And I just want to take a minute here to plug our YouTube channel. Uh, we did a, a Wednesday Wisdom a long time ago about, uh, it was last November, I think, about Noah and the ark and salvation and how the ark is a vessel. And it's on our YouTube channel, as is every one of these videos we've ever done. So I invite you to go there and just check them out. You, go, you can go back and review anytime you want. They're sitting there. They're ready to share. They're, they're for you to enjoy, and they'll be there for a really long time. So just uh, go over to YouTube and check it out. I'll even put a link to that video uh, in this video description. But uh, we're talking back with Noah and the ark and the water that, that the ark was just a, a vessel that Noah and his family uh, were able to, to ride out the storm, if you will, uh, navigating these floodwaters of life. And, and in, that, in that story, uh, you might say that the whole world was just drowned by their sin. The water overpowered them in that sense I was talking about earlier where, uh, where water is a powerful destructive force as well as a life-giving force. But, you know, looking at, at the physical, the water was drowning all these people in their sin and, and the righteousness and salvation that was available in the ark or the vessel was that, that boat that Noah built uh, out of his obedience to God. And it, it says right here uh, that only eight people were saved in that whole incident. Now, let's contrast that with Jesus. 
Jesus is often called the living water. There's a story, uh, the woman of the well, an account where Jesus uh, meets this Samaritan woman at the well and offers her living water, a water that once she drinks it, she'll never thirst again. And this goes back to what Jason was talking about last week, baptism, right? A spiritual rebirth through that water that does signify death, but it also signifies life. So looking at the spiritual in Jesus as living water, we have this eternal new life that's available to everyone, not just a select few. And it's through faith in Christ. Christ is now the ark or our spiritual vessel of salvation, which, you know, we will never stop sinning. We can try, we can try, we can try. But if we ride in that spiritual vessel of faith in Christ, it'll get us through those sinful waters and still offer us salvation, even though we're sinful people. Christ's suffering was for us, for eternal life in him as that vessel. And uh, just bringing this to a close, in 1 Peter 4.4, 4, uh, he says there, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. Again, using that, that water flood analogy uh, for their sin and the fact that, that you will be able to be above that because you're placing your faith in Christ, in the spiritual, not the physical. 